So recording. Yeah. Um, so what chapter seven does is it looks at um, averages because any distrib any um, continuous distribution that it's not going to let me share. All right. That um, we take the averages of becomes normally distributed. So that's kind of a um, that that's kind of like why that's this is like where is weird that it wouldn't show up. Yeah. All right. I don't need to see the screen, but I would like to be able to see. Hmm. If there's people with questions, kind of need to figure out a way out. But I make this shorter. Well, that's a little too short, don't you think? All right. Boom. There. Are. If somebody raises their hand, I can see it. Can't really see that because that's in the way. Yeah. Okay. So what this allows us to do, like I said, is if we take averages of the distributions, then they become normal. And uh, we can then use the same stuff that we used for uh, chapter six, which was the, the tables or um, the looking up on the calculator. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Yes. There. How you doing, Sayu? Um, so we just started. Um, okay, this okay. first. So and I am recording. So uh, this first problem is one of the ones that deals with exponential notation, and uh, so I'm. This is one of the reasons I go over these. Um, it would be so much been so much easier if we had you know could do chapter five and then I you could do this on your own. Um, but they're like no 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 no. So. When we have exponential notation, uh, sorry, exponential distributions, one of the important things to know is that it's going to, a couple things, it's going to look like this, okay? And the mean is going to equal the standard deviation. So that's a useful thing because we need to have that for, to be when we do a uh, normal distribution. The other thing is that there's a formula. Uh, um, M e to the negative M x, where M equals 1 over the mean. So we need to deal with this stuff here and use those pieces to find all this stuff. And there's going to be a formula because they're going to ask about between and stuff like that. Um, and so we need to be able to use the formula that they give, and I'm just going to bring it up because I don't feel like messing it up one way at all. All right, chapter five. All right, weekly work, not there. I think it's in chapter seven. Here it is. And I want to have exponential distribution. And so here's all the stuff that they talk about. This x times um, exponential. The, the x follows the exponential uh, distribution with m, where m is 1 over the mean. So they're going to ask for this stuff. And then um, when we do it, we have this formula we have to look at. And to find areas between, we have to subtract the two of them. And so that is um, in here. Left, right between this right here 
where we have e to the um, negative mc minus e to the negative md, where c is the lower bound and d is the upper bound. So I'm going to take this and copy it and paste it here. Can I move it? That wasn't really what I wanted to do. Can I make it bigger? No, I cannot. Nice. So, um, and of course, this is um, went up here. E to the negative m c minus e to the negative m d. Yeah. So this is the formula we're going to need to put to find the area between two pieces on the exponential curve. So we have this space here. We're looking to find this. We need to use this formula. And so that's why I'm bringing it up here because it's the first problem. It's the only time we're going to use it. So um, well, let's get into it. Um, here we have uh, what does X mean? X is, again, going to be some statistics students estimate that the amount of change daytime students carry on is exponentially distributed with a mean of 72 cents. And we're going to randomly pick 25 students. So if we were doing an individual value, we have to do um, use this formula here. So the variable X is for an individual, whereas um, X bar is for the mean, okay? The average of the 25 people. So that's the big difference between the two of them. This one here is going to be normally distributed. This one here is not. This one here is going to just follow the distribution of the thing that we're, we're working on. So we have to find that it's going to follow the exponential distribution. And remember I just said it's m is going to be 1 over this thing. So it's 1 over. I don't have to put out any, you know, simplify this at all. And I'm not even going to bother because uh, I like it in this formula. I don't have to think about what the thing is. It's 1 over 72 cents. Go ahead, enter. It's going to take this as an answer. So it's perfectly fine with this idea as opposed to reduce, re, you know, re, reducing this to whatever it might be. And so we'd have to turn this into a whole number, which means this is 100 over 72, which then reduces down to this. But why bother doing any of that work if they're not going to ask you to? The x bar is going to be normally distributed. So it's going to be normally distributed. The mean is the mean that they tell, tell us, just like with last week, so 0.72. And now in this case, we have to use the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so because we've taken the averages, the averages are going to get closer and closer to the mean. The, the, the standard deviation is actually going to shrink in proportion to how many, how big our sample size is. And um, so thus, if we get, um, if we took averages of, you know, in, infinite number of things, we really have no standard deviation anymore. Um, so we just go back to just whatever the standard deviation of the thing, original thing was. So, um, and that formula that we're going to use is still going to be Z, So the reason we can still do this and still call it Z is because last week we had a sample average of one thing. Okay, we were looking at a single individual item and the average of a single individual item is that thing divided by the square root of N 
example, n is 1, so it disappears. So it's always technically been this formula. They just never bothered showing it to you at first because you'd be like, well, why do I need to know all these things? And why, you know, you get confused and you're like, oh, but the thing is, it gets even more confusing when they show it to you afterwards. And like, oh, by the way, it's always been this and we're just going to use this from now on. And you're like, well, what happened to the one we used in chapter 2 and 6? Well, um, it's still there. If n is 1, the, the average of the thing is the thing. So it's actually, we could just use this originally in its original format. So we're going to take, this is the standard deviation. The, you know, the mean is, is the standard deviation. So we take the mean and divide it by the square root of n. And to get the square root, it's second x squared. And that's how they get this value. So we just divide it by the square root of 25 because there were 25 people in the average. Okay, and that's going to be the difference between these two things. The reason I can't type in the, the standard deviation, I could actually put this in as 0.72 divided by 5. 1.5. And it's okay with that. You know, as long as I can get a perfect square. If I can't get a perfect square, I have to actually get a decimal approximation for it. So, um, but you can, if you have a perfect square, you can put it in as a fraction. Sorry. So, the next thing is asking us, how do we find the probability of a single person having between 80 cents and a dollar if the average is 72 cents. And that is using this formula here. So I have E, and E is a number, by the way. It's 2.718, blah, 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 blah. It's a, just like pi, except that you've probably never seen it. Professor, yes, I want to ask something like, um, if, yeah, um, if yep, I, the, the question the homework we submitted yesterday, like, if I have problem in certain area, is it okay if I can ask you to just revise a question there? Um, so I can give you an extension if, it, if you need an extension, yes, I can do that always. Now, um, so if you need an extension on something, or like, um, I'm thinking like homeworks that we have already done, like maybe we yep. have some, some challenges in certain questions. Are you going to revise those, those things? So possibly? if you, if, if you can always go back and, and uh, like, if you're like, oh, I finally get chapter two now, you and you, and it's already been, it needs an extension, or just ask me for an extension and I'll let you do it. So. If you're like, I didn't get these, I didn't understand these four problems, and now I get them, and you want to go back and do them, that's fine. But what if you um, already used the three? You said you can use... Um, not, yeah. So in the homework, you have 10 chances. Oh, okay, okay. On the tests, you have three. But in the homework, you have 10 chances. If you if you need more, like if it's if it's a problem like this, and you just kept messing it up, just let me know, and I'll just override it and give you more chances. So if it's an open response that you were like, oh, I never understood it and now I get it. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with that. Just just let me know it's that case. Because if you're like, oh, I used six of them, you know, and I, I but now I understand it. I, it was a multiple choice and I can just go do it. Sure, just just go do it. Or if it's an open you know, response and you get it, just go do it. But if you're at 10 and you've already used it, it'll tell you if you've used them up. Um, just let me know and I'll just give you more. But you, I figure 10 is plenty. You know, especially since most of the problems are a multiple choice and have four questions, you know, four possible answers, you should be able to, even if you have no clue, you can just click <laughs> and get the right answer eventually. So, um, but yeah, if you need them, just let me know. That's never a problem. Because my whole idea is I want you to learn this stuff and you can't learn this stuff if you can't do it. You know, if it takes you 15 tries to get something, but you finally get it and you, you feel you get it, I'm happy. I, I don't 
it doesn't bother me at all, you know, giving you more tries or more time or any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what if like from the, your videos, um, the records you post on this Blackboard, like if, yeah. certain, if certain questions, like um, someone have problem in certain questions on the lectures you recorded, yeah. Uh, so if somebody has a question in the about the well, that's weird that's not changing the things. Um, if somebody has a question in you know in their notes, I try to make sure I go over them, but I haven't seen any, so I've, I haven't you know gone over them at all. Um, somebody did have a question in the the um, homework. So like, I'm not prof, I'm not talking about um, the 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 notes. Yeah. Like this lecture that you are lecturing, this this um, class yeah. we are taking presently, you know, you have to record this and post it on the blackboard. So, like, yes. if someone is going through it, like in certain aspects, like someone have problem with that, is it okay to come and ask for review? That oh, sure. Part? Yeah, I mean, you can you can always send me a question if you're like, oh, I don't understand when you when you said this. Send me an email and I'll, I'll answer it as I try to, I, I'll try to re-explain it. If you're like, I don't, you said this and did this and I don't quite had, no, understand it, I will try to re-explain it to you. Or if you're like, oh, I watched, you know, chapter two, uh, problem five, and I didn't, don't get it, I'll go back and do problem five, right? I, like, I'll just redo it in the okay. class. Okay, good. So if you're like, can you go over chapter, you know, question three and chapter three? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just ask. I, I, like this is I, like I said, I'm here for you guys. You, you know, I, I'm I want to help you with the current stuff, but if there's something that you're stuck on on the past stuff, let me especially know. Especially some, especially some questions that connect with this and um, um, yeah, calculator yeah, thing. So, Those are some yeah. of the challenging questions. Oh sure. I mean, if you're like, can you do you know chapter two? I have no problem going back to chapter two and going, all right, let's look and see what. Uh, chapter question eight sure let's go back and talk about question eight like not a big deal like it, it it's like i said this this time this is your time i'm just wanting like i know i want to cover this stuff but if there's something that you need covered just ask and i will cover it for you and make sure okay, you, thank you, you thank you so see it. So, or you know because like if you're like oh i i missed you know the week three and i watched the video but i still don't understand this one question uh, yeah just just say so <laughs> And I'll make sure I, I go over it. So just stop me at any point and go, can we like, can we do this? And I'll be like, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Or I might say I'll do that at the end, and we'll you know, but and but I and just remind me before you know we, we when we finish up. So so if there's anything you, like if we're going back to a previous thing, I either like to do it at the beginning or at the end, because like this way people see the stuff that's in the middle that we're doing today. But I will always go back and and answer questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So to find this, we have to really just use this formula. Um, there's no way around it. <laughs> um, and to put it into your calculator, it's on. The Where are e, you? <clears throat> the one, the, oh, because that's the. Right. That that was it's one over the M is one over the mean. So and the mean was okay. seventy two cents. So that's where that came from. The C came from uh, eighty cents was the lowest bound, and a dollar was the higher bound. So that's where the C and D come from. So C is the lower bound, D is the upper one. And to put this into the calculator, the E button, this E is different from this E. This E is exponential notation where we're multiplying by 10. This E here is raising to the first power. It's above the natural log. Right? And if I put one in, you'll actually see it's 2.718281822. And it looks like it repeats, but it doesn't. It keeps going on forever and ever and ever. And it's this ugly fraction. Um, but so we use that to get to do this stuff. And we, so it's negative. And I can do a little of this math out here because this is really just multiplying fractions. So I have 0.80 over 0.72. Because this is really 80 over 1. And this is 1 over 1. So I'm going to use those to make my life a little, e little better. So 0.80 
divided by Sorry. 0.7. Where, where did you find the negative after the E? This one right here. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, there's a big difference between the minus and the negative. Okay. <laughs> and, and it doesn't like if you put negatives, if you don't put the minus in, it, it really doesn't like that. It will tell you you have all kinds of errors. Now, to get out of this, we have to press the down, we have to press the uh, right arrow here. Because we want to get out of the exponent, because if I didn't, I would be subtracting up here, and I don't want to have that. I want to actually subtract this bigger thing. So that's where we're going to have the minus. And then we're going to go back to E, negative, and I have negative 1 over 0.72. And so when I hit enter, it's going to give me that probability. Right there. So it's just that. So whatever your function is, like whatever these two numbers are and whatever your change in your pocket is, it's really, you're going to make that into a fraction. You know, it, it, that's kind of the easiest way to do it. Um, you know, like I could write this out, but it's just longer and, and like more cumbersome. If I do this multiplication out myself, and then minus, because I had one here and negative one over 0.72. So when I get to the end of this, I want to hit the left arrow key. So I'll, I'll come back out. I'm sorry, the right arrow key. So I'll come out of the exponent, and then I can put the minus sign in. Whereas this one's negative. So that's this is the, like the most confusing one, and, and I, like you'll ask me again and again to, to do this. But it's the only problem that there is. So. That's the nice thing is that, that that's it. There's one later on where we talk about the uniform distribution, and I'll explain to you the standard deviation, and people are going to go, why is it 12? And I'm going to be like, I don't know, because uh, I've never seen an exp I, I saw a really detailed explanation for it, and it's too hard to explain. So um, the graph, as since we're doing between, well, we have two that have between. So it's going to be one of these two, and it's really hard to tell which one it's going to be, but it has to do with this number here. Because if I put in, remember this was um, m times e, to, where is it? Right here. Uh, this is really going to be m, I'm trying not, not to highlight it, I don't know why it's highlighting. There, okay. Because uh, it's really, go back, m times e to the negative m times x, where x is 0. So I really have m times 1, because when x is 0, this thing is 1. So I want to find out well, what 1 over 0 0.72 is equal to. And that's where I get this 1.4, and that's why they have this is the answer. So um, again, it's really only because you have to know what this thing means. Um, but again, we're never going to have to do it again because these two graphs are pretty close in you know space. The the numbers are the same. So this is actually the only good graph multiple choice question that they actually have. But of course, it's on a question that if you did chapter five. It would be easy, but because I've done chapter five, you're like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so, um, but that's the reason. It's going to be the one that has the, um, in my case, the 1.4. If anybody else has something that's not um, 72 cents, just do one over whatever that your number is. So if you had like 80, 88 cents, you'll find it's 1.1, and so you'd, you'd graph that one. But I think everybody has the same 72 cents, even though they say it's random. Even though it's red and it says that means it's random, I don't think it is. I think it's the only problem. The um, next one asks us about finding what's the probability of having 25 students, uh, the average, you know, between 80 cents and a dollar. And we can look and we can see that 
even just by looking at these, uh, I'll get the right graph here, this one here, the percentage is much higher. It's 26% versus 7% or almost 8%. And the reason is, is because we're taking an average. We're squishing down that standard deviation so it's more likely to occur, okay? Numbers are more likely to be closer to the mean when we take the averages. So that, that's the, the idea of behind it. Um, and so again, to find this, we're going to go to second distribution. And again, normal CDF, because it's a normal curve. And we have our lower bound and upper bound, which is 0.8 and 1. And our mean, which was 0.72. And my standard deviation, which I calculated earlier as 0.144. But if I don't know, and I still had this 0.72 divided by 5, it's fine with that. It takes it just like you know the, 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 calculator, the computer does. And if I put that in, it'll find my area. And again, this graph is not good because, well, they've shifted where things are because this should be the mean is 0.72. And here they have the mean somewhere between 0.8 and 0.1. And so 0.8 and 1. So that's why this one's not correct. The rest of them are obviously not right because that was awful. There, Brimley. That was the worst jump I've seen. Where's the nuggets? So this one here, these both have less than. So that's why they're not good graphs you know of the idea whereas these are at least between but this one here the, the the mean is in the wrong spot and then they ask well why are they different why do we not why do we get different values we get different values because this is the probability of an individual and this is the probability of, of an of a group average of a group and so because we're dealing with the average of a group we're going to have a bigger um, standard, we're going to have a smaller standard deviation, and therefore the, we're, there's a bigger probability of having numbers near the standard deviation. And then we go back, we, we now are done, problem one is done with um, exponential distribution, and I'm going to skip down to the one that has uh, uniform distribution. Okay, which is problem seven, because this way it gets the two confusing new things out of the way, and then we can go into the other stuff. So in the uniform distribution, we have a box where the, it's going to follow the uniform distribution where we have our lower bound and our upper bound. So whatever those are. So we're, if we tell you I have, in this case here in number seven, I have the length of papers is uniformly distributed from nine to 23. It's going to start at nine and go up to 23. The mean is just the average of those two numbers. So why just add them together and divide by two? So I get 23 plus 9 is 32. Divided by 2, I get 16. The standard deviation, however, is, is weird. It's the upper bound minus the lower bound, and then square it, and then divide by 12, and then take the square root. This is the part I don't have any. I've looked up, I've read it, and it's like pages and pages and pages of explanation that means absolutely nothing. I like it. <laughs> it's all kinds of craziness that goes on in it, and I still have no reason for why it's 12. Um, but so it's just 12. You need to have this formula just in case like you ever have this. But this is the standard deviation of the population. So I would take the 23 minus 12 
square root, divide by, oops, this is nine, I hope to have the right number, and divide by 12. So 23 minus nine, squared, divided by 12, is that, and then I take the square root. And I get 4.04. .04. So that's the standard deviation. Now, if I'm taking an average, I then have to then divide that by uh, if I'm normalizing this, I would then divide by the standard deviation. But I believe in this case, they actually look at, they're looking at the sums. And the sums Oh, no, they're not. Okay. So I'm just going to take this number here, this 4.0415 because I want to more than one decimal place. And I'm going to divide it by the square root of 55, because there's 55 pages, 55 papers. So divided by the square root of, the square root of 55. And I get this 0.5449, which is what they have right here. So that's how you find that stuff when we're normalizing the um, standard deviations, uh, the uh, uniform distributions from um, by having averages. The other thing that's in this problem is the fact that not only can we have the Averages are normal, but also the sums are normal. And they talk about here the sum of the x's, which just means that um, it was the thing that we did before we divided by. If I have 55 things and I want to find the average of them, I add them all up and then divide by, by, divide by 55. Well, what they're saying is that because this, the, the averages become are normal, the sums also have to be normal. So before I divided by 55, that was the sum. And if I look at the sums of all of these things, those two are normally distributed. So to find those, we take our average and multiply by our uh, sample size. And we take our standard deviation and we multiply by our sample size. So to get these here, if we're having the sums of them, we just multiply both of these things by, in this case, 55. So times. 55 gives me the 29.972 and 16 times 55 gives me the 880. Now, um, this year then asks us, well, you know, would it be weird for them to read um, 950 pages from 55 papers? And let's just look at that. So let's see, 950 pages by 55. So that's saying that, you know, they're asking for, they're getting 17, pay, a little more than 17 pages per paper turned in. All right. Um, and yeah, they're saying, no, that that's probably not going to happen. Um, because if I do the, if I find out how far away this is from the mean, I can find um, my probability. I'm going to have a normal CDF where I have my lower bound is 950. My upper bound is infinity, so one second comma, you get the E, 99, where I have a mean of 880 and a standard deviation of 29.972. 
I find that I have less than a 1% or rounding a 1% chance of getting that. So no, it's not really all common. It's because remember anything under 5% or more than two standard deviations away is uncommon. So um, this is going to be an uncommon event. Which is so it's kind of weird that they ask this question and then they ask it again. Um, what's the probability? So those are the <laughs> numbers there, they should just switch them around. Uh, that way you've done the idea and then it can explain well why does this thing why this is this thing rare. So if your uh, if your professor um, asks you to turn in a 20 page paper, they're probably not reading is what this says because uh, they're not getting more than you know on average. 816 pages and um, here that's what they're saying the average is for that that's for this professor so um, why is it unlikely that the length of the paper will be less than 11 pages so now we're going back to the original type not the sum but the original one here and again we can look at this second distribution normal CDF now, in this case, we're going to go from negative infinity up to the 11 pages. And my mean is 16. My standard deviation is 0.545. And I paste. And it's 0. And the reason it's 0 is because this has a, this is one standard, half a page is one standard deviation. So 11 pages is five pages less than that, which is 10 standard deviations, almost 10 standard deviations away from the mean. So the, the chance of having something 10 standard deviations away from the mean is zero. You know, it's not going to happen. So that's why this here is a, unlikely because it's so far away from the mean. We have a 0% chance of that happening statistically. Can it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Probably not. All right. And so that's that one. And then the rest of them are, are fairly straightforward um, looking at uh, means and standard deviation. So I'm just going to pick one. Um, oh, this is low. We should go to the Bay Area. It's four fifty. Gas is only four fifty nine. I remember when I used to think that was high. <laughs> I've been teaching this class so long. This was cheap. This was expensive. But seriously, questions like two through six are kind of all the same. And I'm just going to pick um, number six here because it's got the most stuff in it. And then um, let you guys look at the rest of them um, and answer questions that you might have. So in six, they're telling you that we're looking at a normal distribution uh, that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 12. And then we want to um, find 25 samples and look at the X bar. So we want to put these two graphs on top of each other and see what they look like. And what happens is because um, we have numbers here, you know, from 30 to 65. 12 is, you know, 62 and 48. This is really just barely over one standard deviation in either direction. So a normal curve looks like this. But with, if there's no numbers, if there's numbers and, and the X bar would look like this. So if they didn't put numbers in, this would be a perfectly fine graph and this would not. Um, but because they put numbers in, we have to figure out well, where is the standard deviations. And the standard this is only one standard deviation with this mean. Whereas this here is the graph, and 12 divided by 5 is going to be, you know, each standard deviation is like uh, two and a half ish. So 
because of that, we have really, you know, here's two standard deviations, four standard deviations, six standard deviations in either direction. So we really have the entire graph here for x bar. Because like we said, 10 standard deviations, there's zero chance of that occurring. You know, six standard deviations, there's also pretty close to zero chance of that occurring. So we are very far out. And so that's why it's this graph. It has this really high peak. And then we see all the rest of it. Whereas the x is still just kind of starting. We're just only really noticing this part up here. We're just notice. We're just right now barely noticing the first, you know, the peak of what this graph looks like, and it's going to stretch out for a long ways because of the standard deviation of being 12. So that's why this is the right answer. And then the rest of it asks us, well, what does this stuff look like? Well, what does x, the distribution of x bar, look like if this is x? And the mean is still the same. It's still normal. So whether it's normal or not, we're going to end up with a normal when we're done. The mean is going to stay the same. And then the standard deviation, we're going to have to divide by the square root of n. So notice I just did 12 over 5. But I could also put in 2.4. And it's fine with that too. So we can put it in as a fraction. We just can't put in the square root sign because it doesn't ask for it. We don't have a thing to reason, way to put the square root sign in. So um, we, we couldn't put the square root of 25 because there's no way to do that. And that's why we couldn't do the one below where we had the square root of 55. We have to turn it into a decimal because we don't have a way to put it in the square root sign to get an exact value. So I don't quite understand this part of the question because it says sketch the graph and then they shade the region label and scale, and then they don't actually ask for you for any way to put that in there. They just want to know what's the probability of getting less than 50 if the mean is 50. So if the mean is 50 and we shade everything less than 50, that's half the data. That's all that matters. So the standard deviation of x bar is going to be, you know, that. But it's still going to be, it's still the mean and the median are still the same, even though we're talking about um, central limit theorem versus um, the individual values. The 30th percentile, we do the same way as we did last week. Second distribution. And then we're, this, we're going to go to inverse norm because we want to find the number that gives us the area. We type the area in. So they want the 30th percentile, so 0 0.30, because remember that's 30% below. And that's OK. It can only do the belows. It can't do the aboves. Um, so if it had wanted the top 30%, we would have to find the area of 70% with this calculator. And then we put in our mean and our standard deviation for the sample, so you know, uh, 12 divided by 5. And if we, we can actually put in the square root if we don't know, um, oops, like if we had 50, oh, I, turn on, I turn on the calculator. Okay. Um, so if we had 55 and we didn't know how to, what it was going to be, we want to have an exact value, we can actually put the square root in, and that's fine too, in here, and it will do the work for us, and we get our answer. So this 48.74 will give us the 30th percentile. If we want to know between, we just use the CDF. Same for both of these. 
is this the same question? Um, and then here they start asking us about the sum of the x's again. Well, so remember, we take our mean and just multiply it by our sample size. We take our mean and standard deviations and multiply it by our sample size. So both of these numbers, we're just going to multiply by 25 because that's our sample size. And that's how we're going to get these two values. And then it asks about the upper quartile. Well, the upper quartile is the 75th percentile. So we have inverse norm with our numbers here that we're using. If they'd ask for the first quartile, it would be the 25th percentile. So all those rules and pieces still flow from uh, what we wanted to have before. And again, we can do between, just like we've done between here, except that we have new values that we're putting in. So the problems don't really change a lot. They, they're fairly simple, similar to each other. go over there from the rest of it. So if you need this, which you may or may not. And these here are kind of like there's multiple choice. So like those are not going to have a hard time figuring those out. Um, this is looking for the things that are not true. So which things are not true? Because this is true. This is true. In a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are the same. It doesn't touch the x-axis. It's not skewed. And the area on the curve is 1. That's why we have this table. So this one here is the reason it's not true, because it's not skewed. It's This here makes sure that this doesn't happen. And then these here are just asking you questions about finding less than here, finding the um, IQR. They just want the first and third quartiles. So the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. So, all right. Those are everything from that. So did you have a question from a previous chapter? Yes, I okay. have. I, I assume from the question earlier that you did, so I'm just want to, okay, which chapter was it? I think that was um, chapter four. Yep. Okay. Right. Do you know which one? Um, it's not none of these, none of these. Sure, well, there's, there's 14 of them, so I don't know which one it is. Um, question, no, it's question eight or seven, something like that. Okay, I'll, I'll go to seven, and then, so here's seven. Um, somebody did have a question about this, so I will bring it up. So this year we're gonna have a PDF chart. We have three possible outcomes. We have, um, we get a face card and heads. So we have a couple of probabilities that we have to deal with as well. We have face cards, heads. We have face cards, tails. And we have not a face card, So if we get uh, heads and a face card, we get $4. If we get um, a face card and tails, we get $2. And if we don't get a face card, we have minus $2. So this is our X. Now the probability of these things, we have to look to see, well, face cards. There's Jack, Queen, and king of um, spades, hearts, 
diamonds and clubs. So there are 12 of them. So we have 12 out of 52. And 12 out of 52. And then 40 out of 52. So, and then we have heads or tails. This is 0.5. This is 0.5. And this is, it doesn't matter. So we don't have to worry about, this is one because we have either heads or tails and this will happen. Or I could have put it as a fourth, you know, I could have a fourth option. I could have, you know, not a face guard in heads and not a face guard in tails and then done this again. But I would have just had those two values are going to be the same. So now I just multiply this stuff. So four, I'll turn on. Four times 12 over 52 times 0.5. And I get one point eight four six and then I have the same thing but I get two and I get point nine two three and then the next one I have negative two times 40 over 12, I'm sorry, 40 over 52, times 1, so I get negative 1.8 That doesn't come out right. Oh, I didn't divide it by. That's why. Those are supposed to be times. That's more like it. Point two. Three one and point four six two. And so now if I add these together, point four six two plus point two three one plus negative 1.538. I get that I'm losing 84 and a half cents a time or 85 cents. So that's how that first part works is that we're looking to see, you know, we have to come up with all the little pieces, but you have to know, um, What are the face? What are face cards? Is basically that we know there's jack that there's twelve of those in a deck. Is the the biggest piece of that? Um, yeah. Everything else. So my question, like, um, I can't find the question number here, but I know it's um chapter four. It was like okay. I don't read the question. 
what is the probability that the maternity ward will deliver four babies in one hour? Oh, okay. Right here. Um, right here. Number 10. Yeah. So when we deal with this, they tell us that they have uh, 60 births in a day. So because of that, we have, and then they ask us how many uh, deaths are there per hour. So we have to start with that and, and have that mean is going to be um, the 20, 60 divided by 24, because that's, that's the thing that they're interested in is how many yeah. births are there in one hour, every hour. Yeah. So it comes down to knowing that there's, 60 divided by 24, there's going to be two and a half births every hour. And then the standard deviation is just the square root of this number. So that's where those two values came from. Now, because we only know um, how many things happen over a period of time, that's a Poisson distribution. So if we then look to see um, the probability that there's going to be three babies, second bars, we go down to Poisson, and because it's three exact, it's going to be a PDF, where we have 2.5, and we're interested in three. And that gives us a probability of that thing happening. If they wanted less than or greater than, which I'm assuming is the next question, um, at most three, so that means three or less. We go back to VARS, and that's going to be a Poisson CDF because it's cumulative. Same values, 2.5 and 3. And so this is going to add up the three, the, the zero, the one, the two, and the three, and find the Okay, the so, so, so you are trying to say, like, um, when they ask a question like um, most or least, you we yes. use the CDF. Like Correct. exactly two for an exact number. We for use exact PDF. number, it's PDF. Okay, good. I think that's the problem. Yeah. That that's, and then because we if they say more than when they say more than or at least we have to find the less than value and then subtract that answer from one. So okay, if we want to know more than and at least. Right. So here they want to know more than four, which means we have to find four or less. Yeah. Okay. So I have to find four or less, which is this, and then subtract that answer from one, minus one. And I'll get this value. I can just ignore the negative sign because I. In that case, if I find if I find for four, I will subtract it by one. It should give Correct. me. Correct. You the subtract answer. that answer from one. And that'll give you your answer. If you subtract one, then you have to drop the negative sign because obviously we this is just going to give us an, the inverse answer. I really should have done one minus the answer, but it's quicker to do minus one and just ignore the, the negative sign. <laughs> okay. Problem. Good. Thank you. No, no problem. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Um, I will see you on Tuesday. So remember okay. that now I'm going to just remind people, even though there may not be here. Um, here's the test. Here's the thing. The calendar. The test is due on Sunday at midnight. All right. Um, so make sure that you, you get that done. It's like I said, it's 25 questions. Um, you know, get that. The, it's on chapters two, three, and four. Um, it would, and then we're going to start working on um, chapters eight and nine, but and then really test two, I believe, is on uh, six, seven, and eight. I believe it's six, seven, and eight. Um, let me just check to make sure. Uh, here we are. Oh, wrong thing. Here we are. 
Test two is on chapters six, seven, and eight. So um, after next Tuesday, you'll be able to have all the stuff for uh, that chapter. I don't know why I just closed that by accident. Um, control shift P. I didn't want to delete it. I just wanted to get out of it. So, um, but, and then that test is due the week after. So, um, okay. Only because I don't want to have it due after the break. <laughs> I mean, I could move it, but it, like it's just easier to have them on Sundays. Um, but the homework for chapter eight is due after that. But, you know, we then have the long break. So I didn't want to have it that far, like out of the way. Um, so just to be aware that next, so this Sunday test one is due, next Sunday test two is due. Okay. All right? Yep. Okay. So you have a great weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good night. I am going to stop sharing. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>